putting it work. What's up guys? Getting into another one. Talked about the wiring harness. We're gonna, uh, I got a little bit done on it. Got a few clips for you guys, tips and tricks. A few more I still wanna show you. Um, actually burning the midnight oil, man. Here late today, getting it done. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this. Check it out. Shut up and sit down. The Civic, running down the checklist. You know, I told you guys, you get into this wiring harness video, you know, a lot of you guys want, you know, in detail, things like that. You know, for me, making a DIY harness or your own in-house harness, you know, it, it's, it's gonna happen. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to cut and solder. Um, you know, obviously running, running through any, you know, small holes where the connector ain't gonna fit, you know, I always recommend just depinning and then repinning. You know, there's no sense in cutting a wire if you don't have to cut a wire. But you know, the, this wire has the harness has plenty of cuts in it already. You know, there's plenty of splices, plenty of wires where they run into each other. So you know, as, if you got to cut a wire, as long as you get a good strong solder joint back together, you know, shrink it, make sure no water gets in there, prevent corrosion and all that stuff. It's okay if you have to cut a wire. Um, I more or less. You know, gotta lengthen. I gotta lengthen the wires. So I'm gonna have to cut them. I'm gonna have to section wires in on wires that I want longer. Um, you can't find the pins for it. You know, you, you could find some, but not all. And, you know, if I'm gonna do it, I'd rather do all the pins. So there's gonna be some wires that we cut in a harness. You guys will see me do. Um, mostly the main one that routes back in. You know, these, they come out underneath the battery chain, like I was saying. And then, uh, you know the main harness goes back in from the fuse box and all that stuff it's a big fat plug i'm going to leave that in the car the whole time so the only wires that are going to be coming out of here are the ones that's going to plug into the engine and all that stuff everything else all the connections are i'm going to do inside uh talk about the body harness i did get that done i told you guys you know i'd try to show a few clips of me doing that but you know most of it was just pulling the wires out of that loom that i wasn't going to use i will show you what i did with it so you guys get some ideas and things like that you know a lot of this stuff it's not like you have to step through the process obviously you guys could use your imagination as far as you know taping a wire cutting back a wire taking out wires that you're not going to be using but uh i'm gonna jump down in this guys show you guys this harness show you guys a few clips of me kind of just stripping off all the little plastic stuff trying to thin this wire out you know finding out the route I need to be at um, you know a good trick when you are lay getting your layout of the wire you know a good trick to use is maybe a small piece of wire you know and you pretty much just uh, you know hook the wire to the sensor and then you know kind of route the wire where you want it to go and then that'll get your length or you could use a piece of string or what have you um, you know that's pretty much a good way to you know get your links going some of these wires I'll actually be cutting back because like I said I want you know the joints of the wire to come out through underneath the intake most of my plugs are back there anyways really all that's left is the distributor which I got a long lead that'll get tucked underneath there so you know you won't see that plug it'll be underneath there obviously take that off where it used to go and then you got the VTEC and the trans up front that's pretty much it all the other connections are gonna be in the back so you know working with the harness it's not going to be uh it's not going to be like wires going every which way so jump in it show you guys a couple clips here um
pretty much you just want to keep on stripping down the harness, you know, getting all that uh, wire coating off, kind of getting your layout. So basically, we're at this point here, and a uh, couple tips. We got a couple connectors, a gray one and a blue one that sits behind the intake with a bunch of wires running in it. And then, uh, you know, they got these caps that pretty much basically just tie everyone together. So what I'm gonna do um, is obviously eliminate the connector and then just, you know, solder all the colors together. Any color that I'll be using, you know, like I said, I will be pulling a few wires out of here. Um, pressure switch, we got, we won't be using um, a couple other ones, but you basically just wanna kinda take out what you're not gonna be using. As I'm doing it, I'm kinda just laying tape to keep it together. You know, obviously this is gonna be our main length here, going into the engine bay, coming out of the firewall. Here's where it plugs into the ECU. And then this connector here, on the opposite side, this is the one we're gonna be routing back in. So I'm gonna take this in the loom on the opposite end and run it into here. So it'll be, you know, the four connectors staying inside the car. So you will, I'm, I, I'm gonna have to lengthen these wires. There's no doubt about it, because I want to bring that back down the loom here, all the way to the end. Um, there's a couple different gauges here. I ain't got to worry about it fitting through any kind of hole or anything, you know, as far as depinning it, but I will match up the gauges. I got a few different colors. I got a yellow, I got a black wire and all that stuff. Keep the gauges simple. And then I want to make it to where, you know, the stock colors on this end of the plug and on the opposite end of the plug and you know, I'll just length it in, in the middle there. That way, if there, you know, anybody's ever diagnosing this or if I gotta chase a wire, I'll know where the color starts and where the color ends. Um, so basically that's where we're at here. Just keep cutting this stuff back, eliminating what I'm gonna eliminate. Um, still gotta wire in the injector pigtails here on this one. The pigtails for the Bosch injectors. Uh, I did try to deep pin them, but as you guys can see, here's the stock one here. And then here's the connector I'm going to be using, but the pins don't line up. So I will be depinning them, lengthening these a little bit, and then repinning them with the stock pins on these harnesses. So that'll be next. But for now, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, cut this back, get this routing going. That way I have the base of it full. Here's another one uh, that pretty much just ties it all together. I will be eliminating that plug and then just soldering all those connections together. Um, that's kind of what we're looking like now. Trying to stay as detailed as possible here, guys, but uh, you know, also trying to wrap my mind around it, how I'm gonna do this. Uh, I want it done the right way. Uh, I want to do it once. And I'll deep pin in, this is the body harnessed using just a T-pin. If you don't have deep pinning tools, you know, I find this easiest sometimes. You could control it, it's smaller. Um, I do have a deep pinning tool just like this too, but for you guys that don't have one, it's pretty much, we're leaving just the red wire on this plug here. We're gonna deep in all these that we do not need. So you'll see the inside, the little locking tab. We just wanna pull that out. That pretty much gets them unlocked. And then you'll grab them one at a time. We'll start in the corner here. And if you look in there, you can see where they lock. You just wanna pretty much unlock the tab. Kinda of push up push it in on the tab and then pull down while you're doing it and the pin will come right out. You don't want to put pressure on it until you unlock the pin and it won't bind up on you. So here we go, pushing it in, get it unlocked and it'll pull right out. That's how I deep pin with just a normal cheap T pin. I use these to, you know, back probe wires. Let's see if I get a shot, close up shot of this so you can see that's the locking tab right there that that white thing locks into. The front part's the lock. Just shove it down in there and then apply pressure and it pops right out. And you didn't even destroy the pin. I could pop that right back in there if I wanted to and it'll lock right back in there. Quick pro tip guys. So making this harness, I don't have, you know, eight different color wires. And as you can see, obviously when you, when you put it in a loom, you can't tell the difference on each end. And what I'm doing is 
making the loom first, you know, cutting it to length. And I'll show you guys a couple couple tips, uh, you know, how to get your links correct and all that. But you know, you can share colors. So what I do, you know, make make your loom. What you want to do is mark each end. So basically, I got uh, you know four colors here or whatever, or three colors. One, two, three, four colors. Yellow, red, blue, and brown. And what I did is lengthen, you know, cut my lengths, and then just put a you know a piece of tape to mark one end. And then I did the same on the opposite end. You can see the piece of tape there, so I know which wins which. So I you know turn one color into two colors. So when I solder this and lengthen this harness, I know the two colors to hook it to on the yellow. Same thing with the red. You can see a mark on each end, and then the brown. So I got this harness pretty much made, ready to go. That's the length I'm gonna need to run it through. Actually, probably could cut this down a little bit, but I want room, you know, it's easier to cut it than lengthen it. So I could cut it down as soon as I run it back through the harness. But easy way to, uh, you know, make different colors, decipher your colors when you're soldering these together and tell, make sure you solder it to the right one is just mark the ends so you know you know, down the loom, you can't follow it, and once you run it through a firewall or tape it to the loom, you'll be able to tell which one's which. It's all the remnants. You know, stripping down the wiring harness, and then here's what we got here. You guys can see, you know, what I did. You know, obviously here's the wires we had made, kind of getting everything routed where it needs to be. I'll still probably end up removing this one. You know, I did remove those other two harnesses in the front or the beginning of the harness, however you want to look at it. This is where I'm at here though, I'm going to wrap this up now. Basically just got my layout of where everything's going to be. This is going to stay in the car. This will stretch across to the driver's side, plug in, and then we got all our plugs. I will be lengthening uh, a few of these here. Obviously the distributor one, but I want the base of the plugs to pretty much come out from here. So this I'll be lengthening, you know, it'll, everything will come out through this section here. So basically all these wires are going to get lengthened and then come out underneath the intake. You got the starter wire. I did remove the alternator power wire out of there. I still have the plug for it. Uh, I figure in the harness would be better, but I will run a separate power plug for the starter, separate power wire for the alternator. And that's what it's looking like here. Still got to cut back, you know, the front half of it and all the little ones. And I am going to lengthen these, you know, individually one at a time. If I got to run them through any small hole or any crevice, I will depin it and then repin it. And then I still got to put the new connectors on the fuel injectors. But that's where it's at now. I'm going to pretty much uh, wrap this one up here. Um, you know, I try to show as much detail as possible. You know, this part's pretty much just stripping it back, laying it out, getting your lengths correct. Like I said, guys, you know, use the tip of... Uh, you know, use a, a spare piece of wire or string or whatever, and like I said, just hook it to each sensor, route it to where you want to route it, mark it or cut it, and then pull it off, and then you can measure it and find out how long you're going to need the links. So pretty much for me, it, it'd be, you know, this one, this one, you know, all the plugs underneath here, they were all pretty much the same length, route it on the top of the bell housing into the back there. So I'll be able to know my measurements on all that stuff. We'll maybe show you guys that in the next video, you know, kind of write it down. Keep your colors together. If you got to take pictures, take pictures if you're depinning. That way if you don't have access to, you know, the pinouts and all that stuff online or any, uh, you know, Mitchell or all data, you can take a picture on your smartphone and know where to put the pins back so you don't cross any pins. But getting to the body harness, did get that taken care of. For me, you know, this is, this is the only way to do, you know, the light harness the right way. You know, I've seen guys you know, I, originally I was going to run it on the outside. I've seen guys cut holes instead of depinning so they could run, you know, the connectors through that little fender there. But, you know, I, I did it pretty much coming out from the inside. I'm working on the inside plugs here. This used to sit on top of the strut tower. You guys can see I depinned the wires I'm not going to be using. Um, I'm, I'm not using the wipers or anything like that, but kind of routed out. I've seen guys come out of the door here. Instead, what I did is I came out in front here, you know, put a grommet on there so it doesn't chafe and all that stuff. I left it thin. I didn't sheath this line or anything like that. I just, you know, kind of weatherproofed it, taped it, and then ran it up through here so it's inside here, and then drilled another hole underneath here and put a grommet on it and then ran it through. 
Um, so that way, I mean, the, don't even have the fender on and you already can't see the wiring. Kept everything real nice and tight. You can see here's the driver's side headlight. We got the plugs for it, turn signal, and for the headlight, and kind of just ran it under here. You got the ground drop through, grommeted that, and then I ground it right there. And then the same thing, just kind of ran it up and across the core support. You guys can see there. And then dropped it down for this side. You also got the uh, fan plug for this. So wired that in for the new fans. And then you can see I got the light in this one on this side. And then the, it used to carry on into the harness and then drop back in and go to the fuse box. But instead what I did is I rerouted it kind of like we're doing with the main harness. And that all plugs in on the inside of the car. So, you know, we don't even have any body panels on or anything like that. And the wires are pretty much already hidden. You can't see the body harness at least other than right there and then where everything's going to plug in there. I lengthen everything. Wasn't too hard on this one, but you guys get some ideas. You know, it's the only right way to do it. If you're going to do it, you know, I, I don't want to hack into the car or cut any uh, body parts or anything like that. I'd rather cut the wiring. You could always replace wiring. You know, once you start cutting metal and all that stuff, you know, the only other thing to do is weld it back together, grind it, all that stuff. It's easier to replace a wire than a piece of metal and end up grinding and all that stuff. But here's some of the tools you guys see me using. Obviously a torch, some shrink tube, electric tape, solder, good solder, soldering iron and all that stuff. But that's where we're at. <clears throat> Go ahead and uh, wrap this one up guys. Like I said, leave down in the comments. You guys uh, wanna see anything like more in detail. I, like I said guys, I try to be as detailed as possible. I more or less, uh, you know, seeing, seeing is believing. Obviously, you guys use your own imagination and, uh, you know, do things your own way. The way you like it, you kind of get some ideas here and there. But, like, it's the most, most of the videos I've seen guys on YouTube doing the wire tucks are, uh, you know, drilling into the body and things like that. You know, you could do that if it's a fast wire tuck or, you know, hiding it in a fender and making it look clean. But, you know... You got to make it to where you could get to it again, you know, and obviously, you know, cutting a wire that you don't have to cut all because you don't want to deep pin a connector, you know, makes more work, especially if, you know, if your solder joint isn't strong enough or something like that. So, you know, I think the only way to do it, the cleanest way to do it is this way. Same with the harness, you know, um, any kind of plugs or anything like that that you don't need on the outside of the car, obviously leave all the action happening on the inside, all the plugs happening on the inside, but that's what I mean about a DIY harness. You know, I more or less kind of learn it as we go here, but you know, the tips and tricks of using it, you know, get your legs correctly, know where all your plugs go, and then just kind of go from there. Take it one plug at a time. It, it looks overwhelming. That's kind of why I'm doing it in steps here. You know, first getting my routing, getting the layout of it, getting the wire stripped down and all that stuff. And then once we get it in the car and find out kind of where everything's going to go, we can always tweak it from there. So wrap this one up, guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Catch you in the next one. Signing out.